We are off to an amazing start, by the way. Holy shit. Hey, hey, Lauren here. Let's talk about rape by deception. The idea that lying to someone in order to get them to have sex with you should count as sexual assault is not a new one. In fact, as the BBC reports, at least in the UK, lying to someone about something like a vasectomy, an STI test, or being on the pill, and then having sex with them could make you guilty of a sexual offense. So considering that there is a legal precedent to say that honesty does affect someone's ability to give consent to sex, today we're gonna be discussing whether trans people should have an obligation to disclose that they are in fact trans to potential sexual partners, lest they be guilty of rape. Before we get into it though, I Keep in mind, this is all trans panic bullshit. And no, uh, we're not going to look at your fucking ad. Fuck off. I know you're desperate for money with... You're obviously struggling for money. Obviously struggling for money. I don't care. Across a post that was concerning, <coughs> to say the least. It was essentially about how to trick a straight man into having sex with you if you were a post-op trans woman. Now, I'm going to need to omit a lot of stuff because this post was definitely not PG. I feel like uh, this is probably a good, a good point for a, a viewer discretion warning. So just, by the way, if you haven't already caught on, your discretion is advised. But oh, she did a trigger warning. <laughs> Alright, let's look at this without listening to her talk. This reads more like a fucking, like this this part aside, this one sentence aside, which is pretty fucked up. Well, it depends on what the context is here, really. This is somebody who's like right out of an operation. Who's unsure of themselves on how to go about this, which I would imagine is fucking common, isn't it? Like it's a reversal, like 180 of what you're used to. Also, what does it matter? If you're going to bang, you're going to bang. But it essentially said to, one, be sure to lubricate first, use a fragrance-free one, and be sure to dilate one hour prior, since you'll be very tight at four months. Two, do not, and I repeat, do not let him go down. This person says that they've had plenty of stealth sex, and I can assure you men want to go down okay. This person also says that there should be no involvement of uh, digits. They also go on to describe what kind of position is best for keeping your sexual identity a secret. And the post goes on to say, five, most important, take command. Control the whole thing, and never let him go crazy. This person says, keep a pepper spray in your bag every time. And six, if things go downhill, never disclose who you are, never. If yeah, the pepper spray thing. Pepper spray thing is something that everybody should be doing, but especially if you are trans, because people get really fucking angry for no reason. Like, the whole trans panic thing that she's going to be pushing in this whole video is the reason why it happens. But if they do find out and they get angry, they will attack you. It's very unfortunate. Hell, they might attack you just for saying you are trans in the club, which is very sad. Because they're very sad and insecure about everything about themselves. So just having something on you is probably for the best in all situations, sadly. If he notices something is wrong, say you had surgery to fix some kind of problem down there. They also say, now I know it's a lot. I know most of the other girls will tell you to hesitate, but if that's what you want to do, go for it. Check your nerve first, take a Xan, and have a good time, girl. Now, the first thing you think when you read a post- Again, it comes off as an article of somebody talking to somebody who just got done with the operation, who wants to go out and experience stuff, like, right now, instead of when they're more comfortable. Like, the mention of stealth sex aside, I need to see know the context behind what that means in this context. Because I know what context she's using it for. I don't know what the person who originally wrote this meant. I need to know that before I can make a judgment on whether or not this is bad. Because, again, context matters. I don't know what they mean. I need to know before I can make a judgment call one way or the other on what is happening. Just like that might be... How convincing could your surgery really be that, you know, the men you're sleeping with allegedly don't know that you're trans? If you're actually doing it, like, I, I don't know, like, how intoxicated are these men? Because I feel just, like, biologically, there are differences that modern medicine is not able to replicate. But anyway. You would be surprised. 
Besides that, this post is very concerning because it speaks to the fact that there are people out there, uh, trans individuals who are sleeping with people who do not know about what their actual sexual identity is. Or I don't know if I'm saying that right. Their, their sex, you know, male versus female, not gay or straight. Aww. Although I guess that arguably is also included in this. The idea that the idea that you should not have to disclose whether you're trans if you're dating someone is something that trans activists have made a really big push for. A lot of trans people say, no, you shouldn't need to do that. You shouldn't need to tell someone that if you're not comfortable with it, yada, yada, yada. Which um, if you're dating someone and you actually are serious about them, either serious about wanting to have a real relationship or heck, even just having sex with them, um, you should be as upfront as possible about just- um, You're talking about two different things, long-term dating and just hooking up. Two very different things. Just everything. You shouldn't go into a relationship with someone you're into. What about a one-time hookup? That's not a relationship. Purposefully lying about yourself? Like, that's that's not cool. It's not a lie. I don't tell everybody everything about myself either. Does that mean I am lying? Or does that mean I have private things? <laughs> I have very few private things. I, I don't care. No shame. No care. Cool. But also considering that trans women are sometimes killed or at the very least assaulted once their partners find out they are trans, if they weren't aware of that beforehand, you would think that being upfront with people if you are, you know, trans and looking to date would be one of the ways that you could avoid putting yourself in that situation. Not Here's another way. Stop spreading the trans panic bullshit, you dumbass. Like, this is your fault. You're actively helping spread the stuff right now in this video. To mention, you know, it's just, again, not nice to lie to your sexual partners. But anyway, this is also important to talk about, not just to give you all a heads up if you're still in the dating world, but also because there are actual legal consequences to stuff like this. Specifically, I want to bring up this article from Julie Bindel, who is a turf, I guess, to say the least. Uh, this article is titled... So she's a bigot. When is a rape not a rape? And before we get into it, I do just want to clarify that even though Julie Bindel is making a lot of good points in this article, do not forget that she is still the political lesbianism woman. Yeah, so it's like, she may not be crazy about this specific topic, but overall... She's still crazy. But anyway, in regard to Stonewall, which is... I like how because she's not a fascist, she's still not good enough for... <laughs> an LGBT organization slash charity in the UK. Bindle writes that what has what now become fuck? a trans rights lobby group is calling for a change in the law that would protect trans men and trans women initiating a sexual encounter with someone while actively falsely claiming to be of the same sex from being charged with sexual... It's not falsely claiming anything. ...assault. The so-called sex by deception clause. Bindle goes on to explain that while she has grave concerns about the convictions of gay... But yeah, we need to update laws. If they're that far behind, update them. Bring them up to modern standards. Al Newland and Justine McNally, both lesbians who, it is claimed, pose as men during sexual encounters with female sexual partners, we need to be realistic. Men identifying as lesbian trans women while keeping their identity from women during sex are the substantially greater threat. Oddly enough, quote, changing sex does not change who rapists are. To be blunt, a trans woman with a penis, which is what a large majority of them have, can identify... Citation needed. ...as and claim to be a lesbian. All right, so in the first post we read, uh, it was about a trans woman, so someone born with a penis, like a male, who had gotten the operation, uh, essentially tricking a straight man into having sex with her. But Bindle's area of concern, perhaps because it could potentially affect her personally, is of trans men, no, trans women who keep their penises um, having sex with lesbian women. So it would be like, if you are a lesbian and you think... They don't want to keep it. They want to get rid of it for the most part. Like, most trans people go through this. They want to get rid of those parts because it causes them problems mentally and psychologically. I think you're hooking up with another lesbian, but then all of a sudden, there's a penis in the room. I <laughs> Surprise penis. I hope, I hope this is making sense. But anyway, as this article explains, under UK law at least, um, it may not be possible for a male with a penis claiming to be a lesbian to actually rape a woman. Bindle writes that rape is defined in England and Wales as a... Man, if only there was a way to go, oh, you have that organ? I'm not into that organ. I'm going to leave now. Okay, my bad. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were into that organ. This is awkward now. I am leaving too. Okay, bye. And then you awkwardly shuffle out of the room. Not speaking from experience. Speaking as somebody who knows somebody who had experience with this matter. It was awkward as fuck. He, person A, intentionally penetrates the vagina, anus, or mouth of another person, person B, with his penis, and that B, person B, does not consent to the penetration, and C, person A, does not reasonably believe. Wait, if you say, no, I'm not interested in that, and then that happens, yeah. That is them forcing themselves on you, but them just having it, and then you saying, I'm not into that, and then leaving is not the same thing. What the fuck are you talking about? that be consents. Okay, so I actually really don't agree with this definition of rape, but in England and Wales, apparently the only way that someone can actually be raped in the eyes of the law is if a man, you know, with a penis, I'll add that disclaimer because it's 2021, um, penetrates someone else without their consent. And I, I apologize for using the word penetrate in this context. I know some people are uncomfortable with it, but this is problematic. 
Stop being so woke. Because A, you do not need to have a penis or be the penetrator in order to rape someone. It is completely possible, sadly, for women to also rape men. Uh, but B... Or depending on what you're into. In this law, you... <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> that was a joke. ...actually see that there are male pronouns being used, i.e. he and his. This wording in the law could actually let lesbian rapists, lesbian rapists who are biologically male, uh, off the hook because England does recognize... Show me any study whatsoever that that is a thing that is happening. One study. ...preferred pronoun usage. Bindle explains that the key words here are he, his, and penis. Women cannot rape because the crime is defined as being committed by a person with a penis, i.e. a man. But shockingly, a number of police forces already use preferred pronouns to record complaints of rape, and judges have warned female victims of male violence to use she when giving evidence in court against their male attackers. Furthermore, it says that Stonewall frames its concerns about sex by deception as it relates to trans people as an issue of privacy. For example, recent sex by deception cases involving trans people and gender identity issues have revealed an alarming lack of clarity around trans people's rights and obligations to disclose or not disclose their trans history to their sexual partners. These cases demonstrate that it is possible for non-disclosure of a person's trans status to impair the validity of consent. This leaves a great many trans individuals at risk of prosecution for a criminal offense. And uh, Bindle does note here that call me the old-fashioned type of lesbian, but I think it's perfectly reasonable to be informed by a potential sexual partner if a penis might be involved. I completely agree. How do you not know? How the fuck do you not know? Like, once the pants come off, how do you not know? It's so good. It's... The only situation I can think this happens is if they are blindfolded, death, and just... It's the only way I know. Is if they, Who does that? I know there are people into that shit. Who does that at a random hookup in such a consistent manner that this is a big fucking problem? Like, it, it's fucking blowing my mind here. How do you not know? I know long before that gets to that point. <laughs> How do you not know that much about somebody you're bringing to your home or to a hotel? Agree with her. I do think that if you are having sex with someone, that they should have a, a legal obligation to disclose what their actual sex is to you. Because that is absolutely something that I would say for most people. What if they don't have the organs? What if they've transitioned? Then it doesn't matter. That's also the problem. They don't talk about like, oh, they have the wrong organ. It's more like, they didn't tell me they used to be a dude. Now I have to be mad and irrational about it. Because I'm not the gay. I don't understand this. They're not that anymore. Who cares? People uh, would affect whether consent is given or not. And so if you go into the situation under false pretenses, if rape by deception is a thing, which in the UK at least it is, I would say that this should absolutely count as that. And by the way, this isn't something that I or Julie Bindle are bringing up because we're just transphobic and want to pick on trans people a little bit more. There are actual cases uh, relating to these issues that have been brought to court. As this article notes, one woman, Josie, not her real name, is a university student in England who was raped in early 2018. Last year, Josie's mother, Elsie, contacted me to ask for advice and support following the collapse of her daughter's rape trial. During a night out with some female friends, Josie, a lesbian, started chatting to Marsha, who later joined the group and going on to a lesbian nightclub. Marsha could not find their hotel at the end of the evening and seemed quite drunk and somewhat disoriented. Marsha passed very well for a woman on the night of the rape, according to Josie. Conveniently, however, Marsha did not pass during their attendance at court, but was dressed and presented in a far more traditional male way. With the benefit of hindsight, this makes complete sense given the defense strategy used during the trial. The defense used in court, which led to an acquittal, was that Josie was well aware that Marsha was a trans woman and that Josie reported Marsha for rape as a result of being transphobic. The defense claimed that if a jury couldn't be persuaded that the defendant in court passed... I would have to look at the details of this case before I can make a judgment. Again... It is posed in such a fucking lopsided way. Did they disclose themselves? They were both drunk? That could have played a factor? Where's the? What's the evidence here? What's the case? I need to know. You can't just make a judgment based on, well, this is what one person said happened, and this one person said it, but I'm not going to show you any of the evidence or any of the case whatsoever or any of the arguments. No, that's not going to happen. Also, what does this mean? They wore a suit? Women wear suits? Did they they had their hair cut short, long, what? How how what? You have to you have to explain this stuff. You can't just say. And obviously, she thought she was one thing if she went through with it. See, there apparently she was drunk. It's there's so much into this fucking case that I have to know before I can judge one way or the other because context matters. It's so fucking annoying when they do this. You're. I don't even know if this is real. This could be fake. Convincingly, as a woman, then Josie must have consented, and therefore a rape cannot have taken place. So this is kind of scary, and I could imagine this would be an uncomfortable situation for people, whether they're a man or a woman. You sleep with someone that you just meet at a bar, which, by the way, is never an advisable thing to do. I mean, this example is just one of the many reasons of what could go wrong, but whatever. More trans panic. 
or uh, you sleep with someone at a bar and then the next morning uh, where you are more clear-headed perhaps less under the influence and in the light of day you look over at them and realize hang on you look kind of like a man or you know to be fair you look kind of like a lady whatever it is you are not who i thought you were and who you claimed to be last night and it's actually at that point i shrug and go about my day maybe make some breakfast depending on how they're feeling if they're still around i'll make some breakfast it'd be nice kind of scary that the reason why this specific case was acquitted is because the trans woman in question looked so obviously male the jury didn't believe that anyone would buy her as a female which when you think about it just makes the whole sex by deception case so much worse for this lesbian but this article does finish off by saying i asked stonewall why they're campaigning to remove sex by deception we want to live in a world where all lgbtq plus people are safe and free to be themselves and this includes ensuring that all lesbian bi trans and queer women are protected from sexual violence came the response sexual violence can affect all women including lesbian gay bi and trans women while the vast majority is perpetrated by cis men the usual flannel bindle says when the privacy of trans when it becomes a bigger issue than protecting it's literally what happens like it's this doesn't happen a lot it is usually just cis dudes statistically speaking this is accurate statement it's not what women from rape it shines a light on the moral compass of what has become a misogynistic men's right keep in mind it's rare that trans women ever attack anybody it's exceedingly rare. In fact, they're usually the victims. Rights organization. I, again, have to side with Bindle on this. Never thought I'd see the day, but, but here we are. Look at us. Yeah, because you hate trans people. Of course you agree with the turf. Hey, look at us. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? Not me. This is just a very strange argument from Stonewall. If you are worried. It's like the Italians and the fucking Germans during World War II. I don't really like you, but I'm going to help you. Worried about sexual violence against trans. Because. Fuck those people over there we both hate. Women, um, again, more honesty would be the way to combat that. More honesty and less promiscuity. If you're worried about being attacked by rent. Okay, before we sleep together, I want to know how deep you are, uh, how many sexual partners you've had in the past, um, your entire medical record, of course, because I don't know what you may or may not have, um, your genealogy, of course. I don't want any mistakes happening. We need to know everything. You must present that all or else you assaulted me. Because we must know all this information, correct? Random cis men who don't like that you're trans um maybe don't go around trying to sleep with random cis men that don't know that you're trans i'm not saying that you know not how dare you have a sex drive disclosing that you're trans um validates a potential murder but it's like you you have to stop putting yourself and other people in these awful situations but yeah awkward not awful my mistake i did not know you were that i am this i do not like that i am leaving now bye awkward kind of mean Really? If I'm ta if I'm being s then again, I don't see a problem. I don't care, but apparently I'm the weirdo. Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say for now. And as always, I would love to know what you guys think. Do you think rape by deception should be a legal thing? And if so, do you think it should include things? Oh, the comment sections, by the way, full of people just transphobic as fuck.